All right. Hello and happy Sunday. And uh, yes, Winky is here. Right there. Here she comes. Come on up here, Winky. Come on. There she is. Come say hi to the world, Winky. Winky, world, world, Winky. It's happy Sunday and Winky Sunday, and she's like, don't bother me like that. She wants her chicken, so i do this little video for you guys and, and give Winky some chicken and make her all happy. Um, so anyway, I had a real nice uh, weekend, uh, a couple visits from some, some customer-type folks, and Alan came by, and a few things that I need to need, need to get done now, and so I'm keeping it rolling, so you guys that are sharing the videos and keeping things going and spreading the word, uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, a real nice uh, morning at church with Sherry this morning and Gary and Sue and, and uh, just a really great day and a real great weekend. So anyway, that being said, I hope everybody else had a great weekend and I'm going to continue with my solder lessons. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip the camera around again and show you close up only I'm going to try to get better at it so you can actually see what I'm doing instead of zooming in. So I'm going to give that a shot. And I'm going to today show a demonstration of the, the removal of the solder like I showed you the desoldering techniques using the solder sucker, the solder braid, and then the third method is my method. And what I'm going to do is I've got three pieces that I'm going or three legs of one component on a circuit board. I'm going to demonstrate how to take the solder off of a circuit board, which is delicate. And I'm going to demonstrate using those three legs of the same component, three different methods of taking it off with the last method being my method, which I find works really well with delicate circuit boards. So I'm going to go through those three and then reinstall the unit and, um, and uh, re-solder it in place. And I'll demonstrate those things for you. And hopefully with this, you'll have a uh, decent understanding of how to deal with delicate circuit boards. So... Let me get that real quick and I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, you can see my fingers wiggling in here. I haven't, um, I've got this zoomed in very close so I'm gonna attempt to do this where you can see what I'm doing uh, very closely. Uh, you may not see all of what I'm doing with the soldering tools but you've already seen that so let's get started with that. The first thing, these three little lugs right here or what the component that I'm going to remove, which is one of these, and I'm going to replace it with this known good one. And this circuit board is very delicate. These are fender circuit boards. They're they're built to a price point, so they're very very delicate circuit boards. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that using the solder braid. So you get a little bit of flux and a little bit of solder, as we had discussed, on the tip of the soldering iron. Get that so it's nice and even on your sponge so it looks like that and you go from the bottom up is what I'm going to do here so you get this heated slightly and then you stick the braid over the top of what you're trying to desolder and simply heat the braid in between the item that you're trying to take apart until it starts to flow onto the braid just like that and then remove it don't leave it on there any longer than you see it start to flow into the braid or you will burn the circuit board. As soon as you see the braid start to get slightly silver, remove the gun, the, I mean the soldering iron and the braid from the circuit board and it will look like that. And um, let me see what we got here. If I can get that to zoom in just slightly on there. Sorry about that wiggling camera. I'm trying to get it so that you can see a better picture of what that what that unit looks like, what the what the the lug looks like right there with the solder off of it. So that's the braid. You're going to end up with the braid looking like that. And once like I said, once it starts to flow into the braid, pull the two of them away from the circuit board. That means you've removed the solder. You don't need to get it any hotter. You don't want to leave it there any longer because you will let me get my little little pointy doodad here sorry about that this little circle right there is what these these lines and this little circle is what they call the trace that's actually the printed version of a wire 
that little circle at the end is the exposed part of the trace. Those traces are laminated in between some epoxy coated items on this piece of, of phenolic board or glass board in this case. And that little round piece is the end of the trace and it is exposed and it's literally just laminated with some, ty some special types of heat impregnated resin. So that end is very easy to remove from the circuit board with too much heat. It will peel away. So that's why it's very important that you stop when you see it start to flow into the braid. So that being said with the braid, I'm going to move on to the solder sucker. So just one second and we'll do the second one. Now the procedure is the same thing with the tip of the soldering iron. Slight solder on there very lightly. Wipe it on your sponge until it's even and nice and shiny clean like that. Engage the soldering iron, or the, the uh, solder sucker, sorry. It's been a long day. So engage the solder sucker. Tip is clean, like so. Get it in position with your thumb on the, on the trigger. Get it slightly hot, like that. Put it over it, and pull the trigger. And you can see the solder is gone. And the solder will drop right out, just like that. And I dropped it into the into the amp on purpose. Don't actually do that, but I just wanted to demonstrate what it is that comes off. So that's the simplicity of the solder sucker. Now, some like I said, both method both methods are very well known. Both are approved by Boeing and by Grumman and Learjet. So both of those are, are good methods to use. They're safe. They're, they, don't, they don't damage the circuit board. And what I'm going to show you now has the potential to damage the circuit board if you do it wrong. So keep that in mind. This is my trick. It's a little bit unorthodox. So if you go, well, I've destroyed my amplifier because I did your trick. Before you attempt my trick... Learn the proper way first and get very good at it before you attempt to do what I'm about to do. Because what I'm about to do has the potential to cause harm if you do it wrong. So, you grab the component with a tool such as this that you can hold on to it because it's going to get hot. You get your tinned solder iron. The other two components have had the solder release, so they should be loose. So this one, you simply heat it and pull the component away from the board like so. Just like that. Okay, components released. Now there is still solder on there. Now some of you are going to say, well, what's the deal with that? Now there's a couple of ways that you can that you can get that solder off of there. You can do it with a solder braid and, and you can do it with a solder sucker. I prefer to do it this way. Very quick and easy, just like that. Except that I went and filled the, filled the thing back in. So let's try that again. Just like that. Now, as you saw right there, we had a little bit of excess heat. So you're thinking, well, that didn't work very well. So I'm going to show you my, my other little trick. Get that slightly hot. Put that in there. And leave it. Now it's clean. It's clear. It's clean on both sides. I'm going to poke my head around here and look like an idiot and show you that, yes, it is clean on both sides. Now, this discoloration that you see on here, that is simply the flux paste burning onto the board. It is non-conductive and it does not hurt a thing. You can clean that off with a toothbrush if you so desire. It's not necessary to do so. So there's the component removed. If this component wasn't damaged like that, it would still be usable. The lugs are still good. Everything's clean. Now... Like I said, you saw that my method wasn't perfect. My method is quick. It's not perfect. But it is something that I've learned over the years of doing this, that you can do that and you can expedite getting a component off of there quickly. So just something to consider. But as I said, do not attempt to do that until you have learned to do the proper method and got very confident with it so that you understand what it is you're trying to accomplish. Now this simply goes in the holes 
Just like that. Simply just sits in there. Just like that. Simple as can be. Now, if you want to make it a slight bit more secure, you can take a simple tool like this, hold the component in place, give that just a tiny little twist. Don't do it a lot because you may damage the circuit board. Also, don't put a lot of pressure on the circuit board itself because you can you can cause that trace, the end of that trace to come off. So now, reinstalling it is just as simple as this. Tin your soldering iron again. You, you always want to make sure that your soldering iron is clean and tinned when you start. Shiny like that. Dip the solder in some flux. Get it started so it's nice and soft. The flux on there on the ends, just like that, so that those have flux on it. And then you simply momentarily touch it, touch it with the solder, just like that, just as quick as can be like that. That is all you need. You do not need to leave it on there for very long. As you saw, it was very, very quick. The, using the proper solder iron with the proper wattage will give you the proper temperature so that these things can be heated quickly as you saw they're at the right temperature to melt the solder they're at the right temperature to secure it and I'm scraping the old flux off or the extra flux off like you saw but the right temperature allows you to solder it quickly that doesn't mean blow on it and make the solder joint bad those solder joints are good and solid solder joints just like the others on there if, if you clean that off with a toothbrush or something or a little little brass brass brush or a, or a nylon brush it would look shiny like those but that's as simple as it is right there just as simple as can be I'm gonna bring the camera around here just a second so that you can see the solder joints compared to the factory solder joints other than the fact that they're slightly dirty from the flux they're just exactly there like that that little bit right there that you're seeing that is flux on there that is not burn that's just simply flux it needs to be cleaned off and then there's the component sitting on that side looks just like the original right there looks just like the original other than the fact that it is a little bit dirty from the flux the joints are the solder joints are equally as strong as you can see when I'm wiggling it around nice pretty solder joint looks exactly like the factory solder joints only dirty but like I said that's just flux on there and that's no big deal so there you go so let me flip this around okay so that gives us the uh, circuit board method for replacing that component I'll unplug my soldering iron and um, I hope that you guys uh, uh, followed along and, and understood what I was doing. Hope I didn't go too fast. Um, the process is quite quick, and um, I've done it for many, many years. As you can see, it's very, very straightforward, but it's a very fast-paced thing. You don't want to spend too much time on a circuit board um, with, with the solder iron. If you do, you're going to burn it. And if you burn it, the traces get disbonded. The traces come off stuff doesn't work anymore it's the same thing as cutting a wire so you don't want to do that so so follow along with uh, what i just showed you with the with the uh with, with the the heat the amount of time that you put on it the methods that i used the solder sucker the solder braid do those until you get really really good at replacing circuit board components then you can try to use my method my method is very good for getting uh, components that are in a dense circuit board and a lot of components next to each other and you need to get the one in the middle so my method is very good at getting that out of there without having a hassle of removing other things to get it i learned that through many years of being frustrated so but like i said you do learn the right methods first you know learn learn to learn to drive properly before you can drive a race car that kind of thing so so um I hope that that was very helpful, and um, and uh, if you guys have any questions, please put the questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them, 
And if you have any suggestions for what you might like to learn next before we delve into the world of assembling a guitar from start to finish, please let me know and we'll continue doing these lesson videos. I hope that they are very helpful to you. So everybody, I, like I said, I had a wonderful weekend. Um, life is good. Things are doing doing great. Things are, things are good. And um, everybody have a great week. Enjoy your week. I'll see you Tuesday night on a music video from the from the church and I will see the rest of you guys later on in the week for some uh, some more shop lessons and some shop going ons and everybody be safe. God bless you all and we'll see you soon. Bye.